Hang on a second, I think. Yeah. Uh, no. No. Ah, oh, sneezes can be like that. Just like Nobel Prizes, you never know when you're going to get one. And just like a sneeze, you can't get one after you're dead. Anyway, I'm going to try to trigger a sneeze for you in a minute to watch in slow-mo. But first things first, what actually is happening to me when I sneeze? Well, a sneeze, or sternulation, if you want to be fancy, is basically your body pulling the emergency eject lever on your nose. It's a protective reflex designed to clear out anything that's up there. Once the sneeze starts, everything happens very quickly. But what sets it off? Well, first, and most obviously, you could have a cold. Your nose is all bunged up with irritants. Or you might have just walked out into cold air because cold, allergens, strong smells, physical irritants can all set a sneeze off. Basically anything that stimulates the membranes inside your nose. Or you could have stuffed an irritant up your nose on purpose, like pepper. Let's give that one a go. So what just happened to me? Well, once my mucous membrane up here is irritated, it triggers the nerves in my nose to start a sneeze reflex. Part of this process releases substances like histamine, which are produced by the immune system when foreign objects like dust or pepper or even bacteria are detected. Histamine causes the mucous membrane to swell up, and that means the mucus up there can't drain through my sinus cavities like normal. Instead, it begins to escape down my nostrils to move the foreign objects, in this case pepper, out. In fact, in 2012, scientists discovered that a good sneeze also kickstarts your cilia, the little hair-like sweepers in your nose. Oh, and that's what antihistamines are doing when you're a hay fever sufferer. The antihistamines stop your cells from reacting to the histamine your body produces. So you don't experience the inflammation effect you usually get from pollen, and you don't sneeze. As the reflex progresses, my diaphragm muscle contracts, causing me to breathe in. Then the muscles of my abdomen wall contract, shooting all that air upwards. At the same time, my palate lifts and my airway is briefly closed. This combo is called the Valsalva maneuver, trying to breathe out through a closed airway. It's the same thing you do to make your ears pop. And, incidentally, the same way that your body raises the abdominal pressure while you poop. Luckily, that part of the sneeze is over quickly, and I very speedily force that pressurised air out through my nose and mouth, and boy, does it move fast. A good sneeze shoots out 40,000 droplets at speeds of up to 200 miles per hour. Some people can trigger a sneeze using all sorts of crazy methods. I'll mention them in a sec, but I wouldn't have had to go through all that I mean, pepper nonsense if I was one of the people who was stimulated to sneeze by bright light. It's called the photic sneeze reflex. It's genetic, and up to one third of the population might have it. Sadly, I don't, and now my nose full of pepper. Even ancient Greeks like Aristotle noticed that some people sneeze when seeing a bright light. In his Book of Problems Concerning the Nose, he said it might happen because the sun heats you up and causes movement inside the schnoz. That actually sounds kind of sensible. Today though, scientists think that the photic sneeze reflex happens for a more bizarre reason. The body's inability to understand its own nerve signals. Your nasal signals are detected by one specific nerve, the trigeminal, which stretches all the way around your face. In places, this nerve lies close to the optic nerve, the one that perks up when you're suddenly flooded with bright light. So it's thought that maybe when the optic nerve is firing, some of that activity is wrongly registered by the trigeminal nerve. Your brain thinks it's getting nasal signals and you sneeze. So, on to stories of people triggering sneezes in wacky ways by eating chocolate, by plucking their eyebrows, by pulling their hair, or even having a local anaesthetic in the eye area. Again, it's thought that all these actions confuse your trigeminal nerve. Then there's the poor people with something called snatiation. They start sneezing after a really big meal. And finally, a few people have an even stranger condition. They sneeze when they become sexually excited. And no, we are not going to show you that in slow-mo. So finally, why do we sneeze at all? It doesn't seem so important, but almost all animals with a nose sneeze in one way or another. Get this, even dinosaurs sneezed. And if sneezes have been around for so long, they must be useful. 
or an evolutionary accident that's hung around for a really long time. A sneeze does clear out your nasal passages and perhaps they're even blessed. When talking about the problems of the nose, Aristotle asked, why do we regard sneezing as divine but not coughing? So the ancient Greeks saw their sneezes as holy. Was that the basis for our custom of saying, God bless you, after a sneeze? Who knows? Deliberately bad pun. Oh yes. But seriously, we really have no idea where that saying comes from. I apologise in advance if this film makes you feel more than a little unclean. If you're not into spiders, lice and bacteria, this one isn't for you, I'm afraid. Well, actually, this one is for you.